some of the preachers that we go to when we talk about, you know, we might die, to show you how real it is. And again, thinking like a soldier, uh, at a very young age, I bought life insurance for my wife. This is how much I, I understand one day I'm going to die. How dare me dance on the streets of gold while my wife is a basket case uh, for the state of California. I'm going to make sure my ducks are in a row. That's how I understand I may die. Because I'm going to make sure she's taken care of. And she's going to live very wealthy if something happens to me. As a matter of fact, when I was a young man and I made that, uh, that uh, decision to get her insurance, I, I asked the insurance guy, I said, hey, you know, I've never considered it, so please hear me out. Is my wife covered if it's suicide? And uh, he says, well, after, after two years, yes. Why, do I ask? Why, why are you asking? And I just said, I just need to know. I've never thought of suicide. I've never contemplated it. But I have worked with insurance companies. And I don't want an insurance company to say, anybody who took a sign that he had and walked into that crowd wants to commit suicide, we're not going to cover him. And, and again, I uh, do think of these things. I want to make sure my wife is taken care of. And so uh, uh, you want to be a soldier. Talk all you want to. But you better start thinking like a soldier. You better make sure your family's in order. Uh, I don't know of any veteran I've ever talked to who had a family who didn't have a life insurance because they know they're going into battle. And so this is common sense stuff. In the book of Revelation, when Jesus Christ is talking about these churches, to one church, he says, you have a name like you're alive, but you're dead. You know how many ministries I've come in contact? SWAT team for Jesus. Green berets for God. You know, soldiers of the Lord. Man, a styrofoam cup comes from the crowd and clinks them in the head. They poop their pants and all you see is their rear end and elbows as they're running away. Well, they got the name. When we were young men, 18, 19 years old, we needed a name. We didn't want something flashy. Holy tabernacle of the most high with apostles. No. We took a name called Bible Believers. That's it. Nothing flashy. I believe the Bible. So we took these two names, and that's what we blanketed ourselves with. You have a lot of ministries have some outstanding names. i got to give them kudos for having that name. But are you living up to it? Or is that Bible verse going to speak of you? You have a name like you're alive, but you're filled with dead man bones. So if you're a soldier, start thinking like one. Some of the places that we go preach, and you can ask some of the brothers that I'm with, we have a briefing, everybody's on the same page, and I pass around a notebook. I need some contact information, I want a phone call, I want a phone number of somebody that I can contact. So I can call this brother and he can talk to your wife and tell her that you're in a coma right now. Wow. Okay? I don't want to call a wife on the phone. It's not fun being an elder. I've made these calls. Sister, I'm sorry, your husband's in jail. We're working on it. Please, just bear with me. I don't like making these calls. She's, he's bleeding. We got it covered up. I know you saw something on YouTube. It shouldn't have been on there. We're working on him. He'll, he'll call you. I don't like these calls. And we go to some places where it's going to cost you your life. At least our military has the common sense to send some uniforms to that wife and knock on the door and say... On behalf of the United States government, we apologize for your husband. He lost his life in battle. Brave man that he was. Now, I can't say that over the phone. So I have a notepad. This is the way we've done. So if somebody who you know, who I can contact, can say, Brother, you got to go to the wife and let her know he's in a coma. We're working on him. We're getting some plane tickets so she can come over. But this needs to be done uh, to her face, not a phone call. You want to act like a soldier, you better start thinking like a soldier. Understand this concept. We're the only group that I know
that has an attorney in his office when we go out and preach. We've got two doctors on standby so I can call up and say, brother, I'm going to send you the photo of his bleeding head. Let us know how to stop the bleeding. Doctors, attorneys, wills. <laughs> Again, not that we don't trust God. We do live in the 21st century, and I want to make sure these things are happening. And uh, we have to make this form out because of the danger that we're going. And to some of my critics, you've never walked in the streets. You may not want to walk in these streets. But if you did, you'd understand why we do what we do. And so uh, you might come around with us. And, and, and this note with the names is going to be removed after it's over. I don't need to know these people. I hope I never make that call. But I want to make sure that when you're in a coma... Uh, we get somebody to go talk to your wife and say, Sister, he's not doing too good. Uh, we got some tickets. You're, you're en route. Because I don't want to make that call. You know how many times I've sat in the car going home and there's an empty seat back there. Man, that's horrible. Brother's in jail. Brother's hurt. It's not like, yeah, we just like to go out and preach with guys. It's a very lonely ride back home knowing we've got an empty seat. A seat belt isn't fastened. And I've got to take responsibility for that. So it's not this, hey, glamorous thing of going out and preaching. You better have the mindset of a soldier. And welcome to my world. I can't help it. That's the way I always think. People think I'm a cop. People, I've been accused of being a government agent. No, I just think like them. I can't help it. I can't because of all the times we've had to deal with them. Right. Has nothing to do with me being a government agent. If I am, geez, I missed the check. <laughs> the Bible says contend for the faith. Amen. That's Bible. Amen. That's what I'll do. Most people are going to contend for their name. You slander that name, that guy's going to be all over you. Right. My name's been slandered for 36 years, going on 37. So I don't contend for my name. Say what you want to. They slam me on a radio station, on a TV program, on a blog. They have sermons using my name. Churches that I've gone to, there's people outside with signs. I'm supposed to contend for the faith. That I will do. Slander my name. That's like shooting a spitball at a tank. You think that's going to really affect me it's not going to bother me at all. Uh, welcome to the club. Grab a number. Uh, it will take, you can just Google Reuben Israel Los Angeles. It'll take hours and days and maybe months to read all the stuff that gets said about me. I don't contend for me. Say what you want to. I can care less. I know me more than you'll ever know me. And so it doesn't bother me. But contend for the faith. Get out of my way. You're in trouble. I'm going to be in your face. I'll argue for Jesus. I'll argue for that Bible. Mock me, spit on me, uh, blast me, make a voodoo Reuben doll, which has happened. It doesn't bother me. It's part of being a Christian. Amen. Contend for the faith. That's something we need to be focused on. Our next speaker is right here in Vegas. Then he's in California. Then he's in Montana. Kind of an omni- omnipresent guy. He's all over the place. This guy travels around the world. This guy hangs God's Ten Commandments all over. Does he do like you? No. He probably doesn't preach like you. He doesn't preach like me. But you don't need to do that. If God utilizes you in a certain way, I'll still work with you. And so, uh, uh, Brother uh, Phil met uh, Brother Glenn one time. And Glenn says, you've got to meet Reuben. So Phil had sent me a couple of emails. I, I probably get 125, 150 emails a day. You know, who's this guy? Just another guy. He probably responded several times before I did respond back to him. And um, he came over. We met. We had some fellowship. The guy wasn't uh, embarrassed about what we do. In fact, he actually liked us. And he has one goal. And that's to promote the Ten Commandments. 
Uh, this guy probably promotes the Ten Commandments more than anybody, maybe on planet Earth. And so, uh, what a unique concept, you know, to have that reputation. Oftentimes we're told, brother, you don't preach enough John 3.16. I'm one of the guys that used to hang the John 3.16 signs. I probably promote John 3.16 more than denominations combined. Millions of people watch certain games that we did. And so don't tell me I don't promote John 3.16. But when it comes time to give a good, hearty message at a particular people, at a particular venue, they're going to get it. I'll volunteer for the job. But this man here, we're not trying to force him to be like me. He's not trying to force him to be, uh, I don't want him to be like me. He's not going to be like me. I don't want to be like him. That's the concept. That's the body of Christ. Matthew doesn't want to be Luke. Luke isn't trying to sound like Mark. As a matter of fact, you've got their personalities intertwined with the gospel. Matthew, like a, uh, like a, um, a guy that he was, uh, very precise. You know, he's, he wants something. He's very precise in his gospel. Mark starts off with action, kind of a young guy. Luke is a doctor. You go see a doctor, the first thing the doctor wants is family history. He's the only guy that gives an analogy, uh, the, uh, the uh, birth from Jesus all the way to Adam, like a doctor would. So you have your personality intertwined with who we are. I don't want you to be like me. Don't take it personal. I don't want to be you. I'm quite content who I am. And so Brother Phil, when he hangs those signs out and say, Brother, you need to hold our signs. Forget that. I'll work with the guy. He's workable. He loves God. And I enjoy working with him. And uh, here's a guy that's a senior. Most of these guys that are a senior will give you pictures of their grandkids. Not Phil. He'll show you pictures of where this Ten Commandment signs are blastered all over this planet. And I mean, he picks up the tab for most of this stuff. The amount of money he spends on signs, it's just off the charts. And so I'm honored not only to work with Philip, but his wife, Susie. Thank you, brother.